Hi beauty fam, I am back and I got my Lisa Eldridge foundation in and I'm so excited and you're seeing me bare face. I just put on my skincare. Um, this is what I look like every day, you know, just keeping it real of like we do this make makeup to look us, make us look glam, but also, you know, I'm a working professional um, and, a, and a parent. So um, this is me in the morning, uh, bare faced. And I just want to show you um, some of this foundation. And some of you have seen the Lisa Eldridge videos where I did swatches and trans, focusing mostly on the lipstick. But if you're interested in seeing more of those, check those out. I'll link them below. But I'm just really excited. I have about 10, 15 minutes to get ready. Um, and I just really just at least want to put on the foundation. So I'm super excited. Uh, I, I ended up picking up an extra medium one set card because I uh, vacillated if 17 was my color, 18 or 19. 20 was too red for me. So, <clears throat> excuse me, 17 runs warm, but with a neutral uh, undertone. 18 is warm and then 19 was really beautiful too. And I'm just gonna put this up to my face. Um, and just so you know, for reference, my window is open, it's super overcast. I live in the Pacific Northwest. This is our winter. These are really hard days for me because there's like days and days of no sun. So I have a, a, a ring light in front of me alongside my window. So I'm just gonna put this up to my face so you can see. Um, and excuse me, I have unwanted visitors of, of acne. It's beautiful, it's real life. Um, and you would think that this color um, 18 would be the best match. But what I found is that because I'm losing my tan, it just, when it settled down, it looked a little bit too warm an orange for me i could get away with it 19 was a bit warmer without being too orange like oompa loompa orange so i'm somewhere between 17 18 and 19. i settled on 17 just because it was the found one foundation that didn't give me a lot of fuss so if i had to go in 18 i would it was some parts were a little bit too warm or sorry too orange and i had to tamper it down a little bit 19 gave me an overall warmth which i liked but i think come january february march i'm gonna be so much paler from vitamin d deficiency in the sun that is going it might look a little strange for me so i ended up getting seven and i'm just assuming that's going to be my winter shade where i can have some control and even if it is a slit a hair too fair I can also go into the areas like contour, bronzer, and warm up my face, if that makes sense. So for me, at least my makeup style and technique, I like to, um, it's easier for me to build up than scale back, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to kind of give you the reasoning behind um, why I ended up getting 17. So here is the packaging. It is beautiful. I have not opened it yet. I ordered this on a Saturday and is now a Thursday. So it got here really quick. So I ended up getting 17 and I'm going to open this and let me read you the claims. Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin, this intelligently formulated self-setting foundation blends effortlessly to smooth and unify skin with a natural looking soft focus finish. The skin friendly formula gives customizable coverage that fuses seamlessly with your skin. Start with a little and build to your enhanced desired level of, of enhanced perfection. And then you go to our, I'll go to application tips to Lisa Eldridge. Okay, so I do feel like all those claims are true. I, in my first vi video of Lisa Eldridge, I actually didn't set, I don't think I set it for like 30 or 40 minutes. And you can see from the video that actually two of the shades settled down and you couldn't tell them apart. And so it almost blew, within 30 minutes to 45 minutes, it almost looked even better than the first application where it looked like I had powdered down my foundation and it was like a soft focus blurring effect. It was, you can see it in the video. It, I was, my mind was pretty blown. And I have just for reference, I have an oily T-zone. I have rosacea and texture around the skin so, and, and red. And anyway, there's like a lot of things going on with my skin. It's aging skin. Um, and I have like adult acne that's happening here. So for me, and I, and I have really sensitive skin, so I don't like fragrance because it, it tends to irritate my skin, alcohol, all the good things in life. <laughs> okay. It's not, I can't put that on my face. So this, this foundation has hit all the marks for me. Now I will say I've tried this foundation a couple times. And what, what I do find is that one has to make sure you one that you prep your skin. So that's part of my routine. Like if I sometimes I don't I, a lot of times I don't wear makeup. But what I will always do is brush my teeth, put my contacts in and put my face and my skincare routine. That is like a, that was like that is 
my basics and I will not go a day without like brushing teeth, all those things. Skincare is my basics and it's not, it's not a negotiable. So um, if you're one to skip a really hydrating skincare routine and you run on the drier side, this might be a challenging foundation for you. However, I am a skincare addict. I super, super hydrate my face. Um, I have a whole re regimen and I have oily skin, even though this is mostly oily hair. Like I have a lot of natural oils. So I tend to prefer to be more oily through the day than dry, if that makes sense, because I've had dry skin before. So all that is to say, make sure your your face is really prepped before wearing this because I found there was one day where I oh, it, was, it was like a Sunday and I really didn't want to do anything and I maybe skipped a part of my skincare routine where my face was a little bit drier and the foundation dragged. And that's what I've been hearing that for people who have really dry skin that this uh, foundation might not work for you. I think it could work for you if you just make sure you prep and hydrate your face. So that said, I'm going to go in and ready before because I like this to settle down. I love this uh, primer, Sisley, and I'm going to already set, um, prime my face. I just do one pump. It smells glorious. And I just really go into at least gently, not, I don't rub too hard, just gently pat in the areas where I know it's mostly dry and where I need extra help on. And that's going to be uh, this cheek area. Pat a little bit on the nose, pat a little bit on the forehead, because again, this area here isn't really an area that I need help with hydration. Um, stuff sticks fine here. It's more just the oil. It's more this area right here and then the crevices. Is that I go into Chanel, uh, this Gel U uh, hydration under eye prep. I call it my under eye prep and it's this really wonderful gel. I love, again, I'm really into gels because my have rosacean sensitive skin and it just kind of calms my skin. I just love to lay down this gel, even though I put some skincare eye cream under, this is what I use for prep for under my eyes and it just makes my eyes, my concealer and eye prep um, go on seamlessly, but also just makes it, uh, it helps it um, wear throughout the day. So let me go back to the foundation. It comes in this beautiful cardboard box. It's matte with lovely uh, gold, uh, had lovely gold texture uh, with Lisa's signature L and a kiss. And I'm going to open it. Let's see. So, oh, beautiful. I just love this design. Some people were saying they didn't like it because it's not going to lay upright, but I think it's problem solved. You just keep it in the case like this. And I'm fine doing that because this is going to be one of my top shelf items. So here it is. And if you haven't already, and I'll link it below, there was a video Lisa Eldridge came out uh, really geeking out about the science and like inception of her concept and the technology behind her, behind her um, foundation. And so she created some sort of thing that actually she's going to patent. Uh, I think it's included in her foundation and also in her her highlighter, her liquid highlighter. So she geeks out for quite a while, uh, which I love, about the science behind the foundation. But I think what's to note in terms of the design aesthetics, because she's a makeup artist, an artist, she has a vision, is that it's meant to lay this way. And sorry for the finger, fingerprints already, I just <laughs> hydrating my face. So you can see here there's an indenta indentation, and that is supposed to how it's lay. And I'll insert a picture if I can. And I don't know his ethnicity, actually just not, shouldn't say. It's an artist by Nkuzi, and he, he was a sculpture, sculptor artist uh, that influenced her design aesthetic, particularly for this design of this bottle. But if you've seen images of her shop, she has a very Brancusi influenced um, kind of found, uh, foundation display where it's the it's a lying head of of a, of a face, and it's beautiful. So really, really these like elegant kind of sultry and very smooth sculptural aesthetic is kind of where she's going with at least this, this design and you can also see that as she really uh displayed that in her in her shop okay so this key ingredients it has nesturium extract a plant derived biotech to boost oxygen levels to keep health a healthy glow through the day green tea extract um, and it helps stimulate the body's own defenses of radical damage, uh, preventing and reducing inflammation and premature aging. And I think this is what she was talking about that she came up with. Film X XL, and as a trademark icon, I think she came up with this. Film XL, a brilliantly clever 
biopolymer network that forms a resistant and flexible mesh on the skin. Three minutes after application, the biopolymer sets delivering a subtle lifting, tightening, and soothing, smoothing effect. It also acts as a natural barrier against pollution and irritants in the atmosphere. Um, and that's what I was talking about. I think she geeked out and created this with her scientists that is um, on this and also in this foundation and also in her highlighter. And it also includes bamboo stem extract, a natural form of silica, helps absorb sweats, sebum for a soft velvety finish without drying the skin. And then she does say for application, prep and moisturize your skin well before applying. So she does say that and can be applied with fingers, a sponge or a brush. For a light coverage, begin with half a pump. Apply to areas of the face that need evening out and blend well. Okay, so, and there's a QWERTY code, QR code for a foundation tutorial. Okay, so I know that I've applied this with a sponge and a, a, sponge and a brush, but I have not tried my fingers. I, it, I can try it in a different video, but I just don't prefer to use my fingers. It's just kind of a hygiene thing. You will use my fingers to do, will be to settle it down afterwards and tamp down areas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shake this up, slip this up, it's like launching, <laughs> heading for takeoff. There we go. And so just, there. there's the, the cap, and this is what she looks like. I just think the bottle's a beautiful aesthetic. Okay, so I'm gonna pump. And just so you know, the, the, what are the, what's the, oh, it's a standard one fluid ounce, so 30 mils. That's pretty standard for all foundations. Just make sure to shake it up really well. And I only have time to do this foundation and probably some concealer because I have to get out the door and I'll come back and finish my look. Okay, so. Okay, there is one pump and I'm just gonna start with that because a little goes a long way and I probably, I'm going to guess I'm going to need another one because this is just the inaugural pump out of this bottle. Okay, I'm gonna grab a mirror. And then I'm using my Sonia G uh, Jumbo Base brush for foundation. Okay, that was not enough. I think that was because it was still coming out. It's a new bottle. And that was probably like a quarter of a squirt. So let me, oh yeah, that's much more. Okay. And I would say that's probably half a pump on my one side of my face. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the other side just so you can see what one full pump from this will do. I have a little bit left over. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, go into the areas where I have redness and just gently dab. Okay, so what I can tell already is that, you know, when I had the sample, it had, you had that little, with the samples, I just went ham because, you know, once you open it, I just put a lot on and I probably had two or three uses out of this. So I would say with one pump, you're probably going to get a super light natural finish and I could stop here. And it's very natural. And as you can see, it's, it is slightly a little bit um, lighter, I think, than my skin tone. And I'm gonna wait for this to settle down. I think what I'm gonna try to do is go in like um, maybe half a pump to a pump more. Let me see, because I think I'm interested in seeing how it will build up. So that is one more pump. And with me laying down all the skin prep, it's going on pretty smoothly. So you can see already, this foundation will not cover up any blemishes um, and dark spots, depending on how dark your dark spots are. So, you know, I'm having some breakouts here. 
Um, you know, this is part of me having sensitive skin. I don't know where that came from. Let me dab a little bit there, just temper it. So yeah, you I mean, you're gonna still be able to see some of your imperfections. I'm okay with it because this is supposed to, I think this is more of a natural wearing foundation. Okay, start here and you can see this probably, let's see, I don't think it's gonna cover it up. All right, and then I have some scarring and pig, hyper pigmentation down there. And I'm gonna do this because um, I'm not gonna do any eye makeup till later today. And my tell for a bad foundation will be uh, if they settle into the smile lines here, um, if any texture, how this wears here. So how the foundation, I have a lot of pores here, here and here that sometimes when I lay down foundation, you can literally see the, the pockets, like the holes where it just kind of sits in there like a pothole and it's not pretty. I don't know if I can get in close. So I have large pores here that also sometimes foundation will just literally seep into the pores and you can see just circles all over in here. Again, no scent, no smell. And so I'm just finishing, I finish off the rest of this. And that was two pumps. Okay, so that I would say this is more like a light medium coverage. And again, I could probably get away with 18 or 19. We'll see how this wears as I lose my tan. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is finish up with my uh, concealer. It is starting to be grow on me. Um, also a little spendy, a little bit not worth the price in my opinion, but I want to try it. And so far, I've, it's one of those things that's growing on me because it has this kind of like illuminating um, effect. So I just kind of go in there and let it sit a little bit. So this shade and illuminate concealer, I have it in the color 3W1 Golden. It works fine with my tried and true method. I just prefer brushes, the Jumbo Concealer, Sony G. This is the method I prefer to use. I don't prefer um, sponges. I do have them around, but I'm just trying to veer away from brushes because I just think they're terrible for the environment. And also I just don't like cleaning them. And I tried cleaning this and it just, it just kind of bugs me that it doesn't get super clean all the way. And that's just part of like my personality. But I found that this foundation, or sorry, this concealer might do better with a sponge. So what I'm going to do is actually just kind of wet it a little bit. And I am using my Chantecaille Rose Water um, pure rose water just to dampen it because I'm not near a sink kind of tapping the excess away because I don't want a super wet just stamp and so I let it sit for a little bit I just saw this as a hack you let your concealer sit for a little bit and then go into it so I found this shade and illuminate concealer works best this way with a sponge And I think what people like about it is that um, just like the shade and illuminate foundation, I found that in real life, that foundation, I could see all the pores and imperfections. But when I went back on my photos and my filming, that shade and illuminate foundation looks glorious on pictures and video. So I think that foundation is a beautiful social media foundation, if that makes sense. But, you know, nice for the pictures. For me, if it doesn't look great in real life, no. <laughs> so, um, and I would say this holds true for this, um, this concealer. I'm looking at it. It looks like, to me, it looks like a pretty average plus concealer in real life as I'm looking at it. And I can see where there's like a little bit of some technology where there's an illuminating light. So it, I want to, I don't want to say it shimmers, but I can see it reflects back. But when I look in my camera, I can see that the camera reflects back more light. And I think that's what is so, that's what's catching people and hooking people on the Shade and Illuminate products, foundation and concealer is that it actually looks better on camera and photos, especially if there's like light illuminating or um, flash or um, synthetic lighting, synthetic lighting, um, you know, studio lighting. So it looks better um, in the video I'm seeing versus what I'm looking at here. It doesn't look bad. It just looks just like pretty plus if it makes sense okay so I'm just gonna put some on my eyelids because 
this is it for the extent of my face. Um, it's wearing down pretty nicely. I'm flipping my brush, my flipping it around. Okay, I'm not going to set it because this is the self-setting foundation. And I found that if I leave it alone 30 minutes to an hour, it actually, it just works beautifully. All right, so I'll be back in about an hour or two because I have to run to a doctor's appointment and then um, finish the rest of the makeup. Okay, thanks. Hi, beauty fam. So I am getting ready and I thought I'd just turn on the camera. I am trying on some um, Lisa Eldridge and see if I can do some close to a full face of Lisa Eldridge. So I'm filming in natural daylight. I've tried all methods of trying to put this on. I would really love to get her foundation brush when it comes back in stock, but last time I checked it, it's out of stock. So I've tried a combination of brushes and different types of foundation brushes, a beauty blender, and then my hands. And I usually don't like putting uh, foundation on with my hands, but I tried it yesterday and it worked really well. And so I have a lot of, um, let me turn off my light here. I have a lot of uh, skin prep on. So I'm also using this new Shantikai Bio Lifting um, Day Cream Mask, not mask, it's cream. So it's really, um, it's really hydrating and tacky. So I don't feel like I need a primer. And I think maybe that's why this went on so well. So what I'm gonna do is just try it with my hands today and see what happens. Okay, that went on really smoothly. And I know that some people are saying, um, and it's so foundation is subjective. So um, I will say that a year ago, my face was really dry and like I would have patches here, but I've really worked on hydrating my skin and my eczema. So I don't really have that issue anymore. But sometimes I do have dry patches. Uh, I always put this foundation on uh, only after I have really, uh, really solid base <clears throat> skincare or primer, but because my skincare was really hydrating today and I had a slight tack still, I decided to use my fingers. So let me get in close here so you can see. So that's one pump with my fingers. And it almost felt like, so it, for those of you who haven't tried, it does leave down a little bit of a tack and it's supposed to be self-setting and it's supposed to be non-oxidizing. So I usually don't set this foundation unless I know I'm going to lay down powder. And so this is one pump with my fingers. The way it, it felt like really easy, uh, similar to when I use tints in the summer or those um, foundation slash with SPF kind of um, foundations like the Chanel the Chanel tint or what's the other one I use? It reminds me a little bit of the Shantikai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer or this is much more watery, the Vita Lumiere Chanel. Uh, more on just like the application was easy to put on, but there's definitely still some ta tack on there. So that's one application. I would say it's like a very, very super light natural finish. I think today I want a little more, so I think for the sake of the video too, that you might want to see how it, um, and, and it's not a cream, it's more a corrector. So, and I have this in the color medium deep and it just kind of brightens any dark circles or grain or darkness I have under my eyes. that just brightened everything up because it has a slight peach color so that's um, really good for if you have tan skin or olive that you want to go with something a little bit peachy to help with that color correction i've tried like the orange and that's like too that's too much for me what i do like about this is that it's pretty emollient okay so we're going to go into a second pump and try it with my hands again and then see what happens Okay, it's a very natural finish. I would say if you are a person that doesn't like to use tools, this is a great option. Use your fingers, just make sure they're clean. 
Uh, I did tack on some underneath, pumping out a little bit more. Oops, see, too much. Darn it. So I ended up scooping out or pushing out too much. So I'm gonna just go ahead and see what happens if I use this under my eyes. Not bad. And I would say that you do need to work. Um, don't dawdle with this. It does dry down a little bit faster than you would think. But the more hydrated your face is and prepped, it, you're gonna have some slip and give. So that's two, two and a quarter of a pump that just came out. So I'm just going in to my red spots here with my rosacea peeks through. And I'm seeing more red today because I'm wearing a garnet red color uh, sweater. And I get some discoloration here on my nose and here. So, okay, I don't want to fuss anymore. That's why I don't like using foundation, putting it with my hands, and then my hands feel really dirty now. So I'm going to wash them and then come back. back. My hands are clean. I wanted to lay some of her seamless skin elevated glow aka her highlighter down i have it in the color solar light so what i'm going to do is just kind of i'm going to shake it up that looks like oh and that's the thing about the mechanism it's not it's really um there's like no in between like you either you have to commit with that pump <laughs> so not a little bit comes out it just all comes out so that's one pump and i'm just watching for the sake of the video so that's 17, this is Seamless Skin Highlighter in the color Solar Light. And the way I like to use the Solar Light is just use the doe foot and just tap it on. This is more like, it just gives you a glow, a natural glow. I'll put some here, I like to put some here, there too. And I have used this under foundations in those high points and it looks really pretty like through the day. It just looks really healthy. I have four of her blushes and because of the mechanism being faulty, meaning um, literally they exploded on me. So they came out of this way, this end, not the correct end. And this was the one that so far was not coming out the other way, but we'll see. I, find, I think it's what it is. The mechanism isn't good, but... Um, so I ended up decanting them and putting them in jars. So I'm just kind of looking. Okay, so this is probably closest to the color I'm wearing. Let's what see if it works. Dante's Dream. So I think, oh, there, it does work, good. So here's Dante's Dream, really beautiful. And you can see like a little goes a long way. And this is Mountain Walk. So I decanted it and put it in here. It's really this beautiful purpley shade. Um, Let's try the purple one because it's a fun color. Well, we'll try my fingers. Let's try it. So I'll use one finger to put it on and then the other to spread it. It's a very bright color, but it's pretty. I think this is really beautiful for deeper skin, tan to deeper skin tones. Um, and you know, anyone could wear it. You just have to just, if you're a lighter complexion, then just you just go light on it. And apparently purple's in for, or trending for blushes. I don't know if this is like a true purple. It's more of a um, berry color. Okay. So do you see that? That's really beautiful. I think this blush does best again when there's a lot of emolliency. When I put this on my face, when my skin is dry, it's not pretty and it ends up patchy, but my skin's, and I think it's just the nature also, I prep my skin really well and this foundation is pretty emollient. It's self-setting, but it doesn't set down right away. It, it takes about my, at least for me, my experience, it can set down between 30 minutes to an hour. And that's just my experience because I was doing, I was filming and then, and I could see on the camera, like how it set down. So this is really beautiful, look at that. I usually don't bring it to the front that much just because I generally don't like to do that, but for the sake of the video, I'm doing that. Okay, so again, that's Mountain Walk and that's the more uh, berry tone. Velvet Fawn. 
Oh, let me pull it out more. There we go. Velvet Fond. Velvet Affera. That might be more too brown, actually, for what I'm wearing. Velvet Muse. A blush Lightly. These are all in the Velvet formula. Her formula is very matte. I do like to lay down a little bit emolliency. So I have my Viseart lip oils and I'm just using what is to me the clear one, but it's called Petal. It's like this light pink. I mean, there is a little pink sheen in it. So I just put just a little bit so there's a little bit of slip. Ooh, I think this is brighter and pinker than I wanted it to be. So this is the original blush, not blush lightly. It is deeper. Yeah, let's go with that one. Beautiful color. Okay, so I grabbed the blush lip liner and this is what it looks like. And I'll run it across here so you can see that you could use it for either one really. It is deeper. And it's like a little design thing is that when you take off the cap here, it doesn't fit on here. So, <laughs> and I end up like, it ends up like rolling away and I can't find it. Anyway, it's this thing where just know that top doesn't stay on the other side. Okay, so you can see I just kind of defined a little bit the lips. Uh, uh, see, this is why I don't bring blush in the front too, just for me, is that I have rosacea. So I'm starting to get hot and then some of my rosacea is peeking through, but it just looks like, it looks like I have a very healthy flush. So this foundation, and so I pretty much have almost all Lisa Aldridge on my face. With all you all, I hope you enjoyed the quick uh, get ready with me with Lisa, Lisa mostly Lisa Eldridge um, products on my face. Hi, beauty fam. Uh, I just wanted to come on and do a quick check-in of my makeup. It's been about three and a half, four hours since I did my Lisa Eldridge mostly full face of makeup this morning. And initially I did not powder it down and I just wanted to see how oily it would get before it just got too unbearable. I would say probably about the two hour mark, it was a little bit too oily. For me, I was in a, a Zoom meeting and I was like, ooh, it looks a little bit too shiny. So um, about an hour ago, I think I powdered down with the Chantecaille humming Hummingbird Blurring Powder. And so you can see that uh, my definitely my natural uh, oils are coming through. I actually don't mind it. I think it, that's like a nice, glowy sheen. Uh, we'll see what happens at the end of the day if I'm still feeling the glowiness or if it just looks too oily. But I've worked, I've worn tests, I've wore test this foundation a couple times already and I think it wears beautifully. I have not had an issue with it. It reminds me a bit of how the Chantecaille uh, Future Skin Gel Foundation wears down that it just, it's a kind of like a glowy natural glow um and it wears down like kind of like natural skin finish so i think i'm seeing that similarity with this foundation but i will check in at the um later on today hi beauty fam i'm about at the six hour mark and i um have to give an update on those Shantikai cream lids and i know this is a lisa eldridge video but i thought i'd let you know i did take the cream eyeshadows off. Um, they usually work for me, but for today they were not. So there was massive creasing with those Chantecaille um, Mermaid Lid, Lust Lid Luster eye creams. So I don't know if it's because I did not prime my eyelids, but they usually have not creased for me. And so I'm going to wear a test those another day. So just want to let you know that I did take them off my eyelids because they were not looking pretty. <laughs> so um, in terms of the foundation, you know, it's definitely more of a natural wear. I like a little more coverage than this. So I would say if you're wanting more natural coverage, kind of like improved natural foundation, kind of like your skin, but a little bit better, use your, your hands.
Um, I don't prefer this. Like, there's too much redness peeking through for me of what I'm comfortable with. So I don't think I would put it put it on with my fingers again. And I'm almost tempted to put on another layer with foundation with with a brush to see how that wears. But just wanted to give you um, an update. Where I'm at, I'm about at the six hour mark. Hi, beauty fam. I'm doing the last check-in of the Lisa Eldridge uh, foundation. Um, you probably noticed, I think this is probably the third shirt I've worn today. Um, and this happens often in the Northwest. Uh, we have microclimates here. So the weather that starts off in the day might be different in two hours and different than the end of the day. So it was cold this morning and I had a sweater on and then I got hot because the sun came out and then I changed into a blue blouse at some point and then the sun went down and then I changed into a long sleeve t-shirt because I was wearing a fleece jacket anyway you're not here for my um <laughs> my wardrobe woes in the northwest you're here for the last evening check-in so it is almost eight o'clock and I put this foundation on at 9 30 so that's about 10 and a half hours and I don't know if this is accurate really reading so um I think in the last check-in, I told you that I did not like the application with my hands. And so even on Lisa Eldridge's website or her video, she says that if you want a light application, she uh, goes, she recommends using your hands. And I even did, I think, did I do two? I can't remember. It's been a long day. I I did an application with my hands and by the time I did the check-in with the blue shirt, the blue blouse, um, it felt like most of it had worn away. So um, just something to note, I was not wearing primer today. So uh, if you're one who wears primer, doing the hand application, the fingers application might be fine. But um, I think you saw me, <laughs> like I couldn't even stand having the stuff on my hands. I had to go wash it right away. Uh, and so just from that experience, I don't think I would use my, my fingers again for the application. So I was filming another video. So I think um, you'll see that if you um, want to click over and I'll link it up above. I did a Dior review of the, uh, the lipstick case. So in that video, I uh, basically reapplied um, so what you're seeing now is like a reapplication. So I actually put another, I guess it's a second or third layer of the Lisa Eldridge app, um, foundation with a brush. And that is the method I prefer. I don't, I tried using a beauty blender. I don't recommend it just because the way the formula is, it just absorbs a lot of product. And I don't think you're going to get a lot of bang for your book. I think what's going to happen is that beauty blender is going to absorb a lot of that product. And so I just, that's just my opinion. I, I tried it with the beauty blender and I had to keep like pumping out a lot. And, um, I just didn't like having to use that much product. So my recommended application is really with a foundation brush. Um, at some point I will probably pick up the foundation brush that she is selling. Um, and right now it's, um, it's out of stock on her website. So let me get in closer. You know, it's obviously evening. It's almost, um, almost eight o'clock so ten and a half hours in um you know I so what's happened since that last time I did my makeup check with the blue blouse um the last time um that was the last time I powdered so you're seeing how many hours look I forget what how many, what time that was I think it was around 3 30 3 34 35 36 30 7 30 so this is four and a half hours later I have not touched up the makeup other than the lipstick. So I have not powdered. Uh, the eyeshadows looking really great. That's a Dior um, from their Ecrine Couture uh, holiday collection. I did not touch up. Um, no, I did. I redid my blush and my bronzer because unfortunately, this is what I remember about the um, Lisa Eldridge blushes. And most cream blushes, it just wears off on me. And I think it's because you can see I have naturally oily skin. And so I don't, I have not found a cream blush to this day that doesn't disappear on me. So I, that's, <laughs> I don't like cream blushes. I don't like the Lisa Eldridge cream blush and it has nothing to do with Lisa Eldridge. It just happens to be like cream, no cream blush has worked on me. 
so far. Um, and if you have one that you think I should recommend that will stay on my face, uh, let me know. But I also will be scared of why does it stay on my face if there's like that so much chemicals in it. Um, you see what I'm saying? Like if it stays on my face, like why is it staying on my face? So some things are not meant to be. I'm not one to force it. So if, if cream blush is like not in the cards for me, I'm fine with that. So what I have it on now is the Dior Charnel blush and bronzer I did in the video, which you are welcome to view. And I have uh, this, um, color is this? A Dior limited edition uh, from their from the holiday packet package 466 pink rose satin and i wanted to try on pink because i'm wearing a pink um pink shirt just to see what it looks like and so i would say i am still a fan of this foundation um you can see where i have aging like wrinkles up here and this is pretty good wear i mean for i know i reapplied it but this is like probably at the second or third base on top of the application and I think it's wearing pretty darn well. I usually don't wear makeup this long, but I'm <laughs> I have it on because I'm filming with for you guys. And so I've this is not the first time I've worn uh, the Lisa Eldridge foundation for a long time because I've been wear testing it. I wear test a lot of foundations. I just don't film all of it. And so I would say, um, and I'll do probably a quarterly roundup of all my favorite. Um, products in the past four months. I think that's the way I'm leaning. Um, people like to do like the monthly roundups. And again, I think I've mentioned in a different video. I don't, for me as a content creator, I don't wear makeup every day. So, and I also need time to get to know the product. I don't feel comfortable letting you know my opinion other than a first impression of, um, you know, having only two, you know, bought it a week or two before and then like, unequivocally saying I like it I mean I definitely want time with the product because what I think with time things are gonna show a person or us if it wears well over time so for me it just makes sense not to do monthly um reviews I'll probably do the quarterly every three months or every four months of like what I bought um I'm still trying to figure out the format but you know, I've been testing out this Lisa Eldridge foundation so far, and I can usually tell right away if I'm going to like it or not. And I am loving it. I don't think it's working for everybody. I think it's one of those things that since she sells those cards, it's worth getting and seeing if you can find a foundation match and then just really testing out the product to see if it works for you. I just wish all companies did that instead of um, getting samples if you're lucky, if you live near Nordstrom's or just like buying it and then wasting your money if it doesn't work. So I think that's it, folks. I just, I think this is the end of the review. I have different reviews on Lisa Eldridge and her products, um, the foundation and the lipsticks um, and the swatches. So I'll link those all below. I am a fan of Lisa Eldridge. I really uh, think she creates some really great products and I'm looking forward to her lid lacquers that hopefully come out before the end of the year. I'm going to guess they're going to come out soon. But that's it. That's for the review for my Lisa Eldridge uh, foundation review. Again, this is shade 17. Um, aging skin, oily, oily T-zone, but pretty much like oily everywhere. <laughs> um, sensitive skin, rosacea, and I think, um, yeah, I'm just getting in close so you can see. I mean, this is pretty normal for me the only foundation that doesn't look oily like this at the end of the day for me is the chanel ultra latent um flawless all day something 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 too long of a foundation name foundation so that's it uh beauty fam um and if you haven't done so already please consider uh thumbs clicking on the button for a thumbs up below commenting and if you haven't subscribed yet to the Mickey Carr Beauty Fam, I would so appreciate if you could and then ring the notification bell to make sure you get notifications of when I post videos. I appreciate your support as always. And uh, as always, be very kind to yourself and others and just be you. And until I see you in the next video, take good care. Take care. Good night. Bye.